Alright guys, this is going to be a build video for this little Delta pusher wing that I designed. A lot of people are flying this wing and I get a lot of questions regarding its construction and design. And even though there are PDFs available, um, thanks to Intense Walkera for making those, I still get lots of questions and honestly you don't even really need the PDFs. This is a really simple wing, so I'm going to show you guys how to build it. So to start off with, you need a 30 by 20 sheet of foam board that's just from the Dollar Tree a ruler, yardstick, a knife, a marking pen, and some pink foam. And we'll get started. So this plane has a 30 inch wing span, so you're going to be using the full size of this board from side to side. We're going to need some, to make some marks for our first cuts. So, here's the yardstick. This is 20 inches long on each side here. And up from the bottom, you're going to make a mark at 2 inches up and then nine inches up and then do that on the other side all right then I like to mark the center then I'm gonna make a line right down the middle so here's the marks that you made here's two inches up nine inches up on both sides here's down the middle then then down the middle here we're gonna make a mark at 11 and then 13 inches back. Okay, now from this top point you're going to connect it down to this mark at 9 inches on both sides. Alright, then you have this mark at 11 inches then 13 inches. You're going to draw a line from this 13 inch mark back to each corner and a line from this 11 inch mark back to each mark two inches up on both sides. So now my foam board looks like this. And you can see this is the general shape of this wing. Um, now at this point I like to do, I like to mark, so this is 11 inches back from here to here, I like to make another mark because this is going to be cut out for the propeller right here. So I like to make a mark on both sides 11 inches back from the front then draw a line across. Now this line, I'm going to make it 8 inches wide because I'm going to use an 8 by 4 prop. So 4 inches on both sides. Now, from here, so this is 8 inches cut out, and this, if you look on the original plane here, so this is 8 inches across, and these kind of angle out here, and this is 10 inches across from here to here. So to do that, I find where 10 inches out on here, or yeah, five inches on both sides. So here at the bottom, I just make a little mark five inches out on both sides. Then I do the same at the top of the paper, or the foam board. All right, now on each side here, if you connect this, the yardstick, do not draw this line. You can see exactly where five inches over on there. And I make that mark, and then that line gets connected up to here. So that is what we have right now, and that is the basis of this wing. So now you can cut this out. So the cuts are going to go along here, here, and then you're going to cut this out. So all of this gets scrapped in here. So you're going to cut along this, and then down along here, and I leave these attached. These are going to be the elephants. I leave these attached at first. There we go. Here is the basis of this wing. Now we are going to cut out the KFM airfoil for it. And for that I'm going to use the half inch pink foam from Home Depot. And so I'm going to make a mark here on the side. So this is nine inches here, the tip cord, nine inches long, including two inches of elevon. So I'm going to mark back at four and a half inches. That's half the distance as specified for KFM2. All right, now grab your pink foam. Alright, and the way I do this, 
is I just lay it down on here. So a KFM is roughly going to be this strip here, then down to here. So when I mark, I mark along this leading edge on both sides. I mark the center. I mark the center down here. Then I mark this four and a half mark right over here. Draw this line. Then I mark four and a half on this side. Draw that line. All right. So now you can see the basic outline on here. It's a little bit hard to see. It turns out this marker is not the best to use here. Um, but here's the center mark. Here's this. Here's the leading edge. Here's the tail or the uh, the tip edge. So this is 11 inches here in the center. Confirm this. Perfect. And you have the center line, and this is has an 11 inch root cord. So half of 11 is five and a half. So you mark back five and a half inches, and then connect that out here to the four and a half inch mark on both sides. So here's the KFM2, and here's the body of the plane. Lay it on here, make sure it fits. Alright, fits great. Lines up with all the edges here. Perfect. Now you're going to get out your hot glue gun. Hot glue on here, here, and lay it on there. And then once it's on there, I do a bead of glue along this trailing edge right here. And now, what you're going to want to do is take your knife, make sure it's a really sharp knife, and cut this down. Just cut off an angle here because you want to make this a nice smooth front edge. So I kind of lean it over a table like this, and I, and I cut along here. Actually, I'm going to do it on the other side of the table since I am right-handed. Alright, there we go. Got some nice curves on there. You can kind of look down there and see. It's nice. Now I'm going to take sandpaper. I take 150 grit sandpaper. You can do this by hand with a sanding block and sand this down. Or you can use a sander, like a random orbital sander and kind of do that. And that really helps to get it really nice and smooth. So I'm going to use an electric sander here and I'm going to do it outside and not film that. But I'll show you what the results are. Alright, I just finished sanding. You can see that this is nice and even airfoil on here. It's great. It's perfect. So now you're going to hinge your elevon. So cut right along here and then bevel. I only bevel one side and I bevel the side on here because if I mess up the bevel, I don't want to mess up my airframe here. I can easily make a new elevon, but I don't want to mess up the airframe. So bevel this side, do it both sides. And attach. And to attach, I use this bi-directional uh, scotch tape. I don't know exactly what it's called, like extreme, something like that. I like this. I do a strip across the top from side to side, and I do two little ones on both sides underneath. Then I check the movement. A little bit of tape over the side, doesn't matter. There we go. Now repeat on the other side. Alright, so this is great. Perfect play in here. So, now you need to put in your control horns. 
your push rods. I make these push rods. These are seven and one quarter inch long, I believe. Seven, oh, sorry, seven and a half. They're seven and a half inches long. And that's from bend to bend. And these bends are not collinear here. They're at 90 degrees to each other. So here, I think, let's see if you can take a look down this one. There. So this one's laying flat. And if you look, that one's up and down. Same with this one here. So for control horns, I used to use Popsicle sticks. Those were great. Those worked awesomely. But I've recently switched over to these from Dubro. They're the half A control horns. What I like about these is that I don't use like the little plate and everything that comes in here. Uh, what I do, here I'll show you one. Alright. So this is what you have. And what I do is I make a little slit in the foam and I push this up through from the bottom. So this plate is on the bottom of the foam. So it's like this if my fingers are the foam. So when this is pulling, it can't pull through because it has this stopping on the bottom. And I just put glue here on the bottom and on top. So then I put my control horns about inch and a half, two inches over. Then you want to be using these long push rods because it gets your servos up further to get a better center of gravity. These lines that I just made are each six inches over from the midline. And down here, this is where I'm going to put the control horn in. And then right up here along this line, this is where the servo will be embedded in the pink foam. So go ahead and put on your control horn. So what I do is I make a little slit. I push it up through the bottom right up against where it hinges. Alright, so this side is dry over here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this in here. I use the top hole on these. Then, with this flat, with the elevon flat on the table, I'm going to set this up on here, right along this line that I made. the servo in its neutral position and mark this out. So I have these two little squares. I'm going to cut them out. I cut inside the lines because I want this to be a tight fit for the servo. Alright, so these are both cut out all the way through. Now I'm going to reattach the, uh, the push rods and put the, uh, the servos in. Alright, here we go. That servo is in. Servo wire coming out the bottom. And that is flat. So now I'm going to do it on the other side. And so now what I do though with each of these to put them in there permanently, I put a little glue on both sides and drop it down in. Alright, there we go. So this may not look like it, but this wing is almost done. Um, at this point, uh, you can attach fins on the side. You can use uh, any type of fin you want. Here's the original fin design that I was using. This big bulky one. Um, you can go with no fins. You can check out some of my other videos for experiments with that. But this, this wing does not need fins. Uh, I'm going to put on these big fins again. I know I said that I don't need them and I can use smaller fins, but I'm going to be trying a different uh, motor on this plane. That's why I'm building this. And it's a little bit bigger than this one. has a little bit bigger profile here. So I want to add these for extra stabilization while I'm checking this out. But 
If you're going to do this, this is just a little Blue Wonder 1300 KV 8x4 with a little uh, plastic stick mount. Just glue it on there and put some tape over it, ESC. And then the next thing I am going to show you is this. So you're going to cut out this little area right here in the pink foam to recess the battery down in here. Um, you cut this out and then this area, the pink foam adds a lot of stabilization to the swing. When you cut it out, it destabilizes it. So what we're going to do is put a popsicle stick in right across here. Put down the foam with some hot glue to re-stabilize. I'm making mine two inches wide uh, for this first part, then only an inch wide here at the back. This fits my receiver and my battery. And I use 1300 milliamp hour, and a two inch slot will fit uh, most of your needs just perfectly. The way I generally do it is I take some pliers and I just pull out the pink foam. Alright, so now to restabilize this area, I'm going to sink a uh, popsicle stick down in here. I'm just going to put it right here across this line and glue it in because you see without this. Alright, so I'm going to cut a little channel here for the popsicle stick to sit in. Now glue and put it back in. Alright, there we go. So now the battery sits here, receiver sits right there. And now you can put on fins, you can use any design you like. You can check out the PDFs for the, that fin design. I don't want to go into it here, I just want to keep this as simple as possible. And then you put on your motor, I recommend something with a stick mount. And then the CG is 7 inches back from the front, so now is a good time to mark that. And then I run the servo wires here, and I make a hole in the bottom right here, bring them back up through, and then that's about it. So I'm going to finish up the swing, and I'll show you what I end up with. So here we go. So from where I left you off last, most importantly, I put on the motor. Um, I just use a stick mount. This is like a little Emacs motor. I think it's around like 1300, 1400 kV, something like that. I don't remember the exact specifications, but it has about 10 ounces more thrust than that little Blue Wonder. So I wanted to put this on there because that Blue Wonder makes this plane scream in the air. So this thing, I just really wanted to have some fun, see what this plane can take. Then you put on your ESC, just attach it with Velcro, receiver here, these servo wires ran across the bottom here, taped them down, came up here, uh, ran through, just made a little hole in the fuselage right there. And then you can attach your battery however you like. There's a little piece of Velcro here. And then I did a Velcro strap around the bottom with popsicle sticks to help hold this down and to strengthen this nose right here. They run up here and I can just strap over the battery. Um, I also put on tape on the leading edge, different color duct tape to help with orientation because it's really easy to lose your orientation with these small wings in the air. That's about it. I left that rest up to you because everyone has their own motor and everything that they use. So I didn't want to uh, get into all those details because it's going to probably be different for you anyway. But this is it. Pretty simple build. Uh, even with some basic skills, you can build this really quickly, one night, easy. I can build usually like two or three of these in one night if I want to make a couple of them. Uh, so I hope this helps. Let me know what questions you have.